I feel like I look weird today. Is it my eyes? Do they look really dark? That, those are the darkest eyes I've ever seen in my life. Hello, hello. What is up? How are you today? I'm Paige Leal and you are watching Paige Leal. You may know me from TikTok where I have a, a much larger uh, platform. If you guys are not already doing so, you can go check me out on TikTok at Paige Leal. And while you're at it, you can follow my Instagram with the same name. I have a lot more videos on TikTok than I do on YouTube thus far. We need better autistic representation. And so whereas these characters are not listed as autistic or made to be autistic, they are often <laughs> the characters that have the best representation for the autistic community. And we deserve better representation. So let's talk about some of the characters that are definitely autistic canon. <laughs> A big thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video today. If you guys don't know what HelloFresh is, you're a silly goose. HelloFresh is like bringing your meals and your groceries right to your house. By meals, I mean breakfast, lunch, dinner, sides, desserts. And there are so many recipes you can choose from, including low calorie, pescatarian, vegetarian. There are new options every single week. You go online and you can order the size of your box depending on how many people how many meals, how often, they get sent right to your door. This saves you a lot of time from going to the grocery store and having to buy things that oftentimes you don't even use the full thing anyway. HelloFresh packages you every single thing you need besides salt and pepper. That includes the exact amounts of garlic you need, the exact amounts of every single thing. It's easy, you don't have to do much measuring at all. You don't have to go to the store and you don't have food going bad in your fridge. And you cut out that middleman, all that transportation going from the farmers to the grocery store. Actually, it's less wasteful and has a smaller carbon footprint. It saves so much time and you don't have to plan anything. You don't have to plan what meals you're gonna get. You just have them planned for you. And if you hate the meal, you can go in and you can change it. It is super flexible. You can skip meals, you can change meals all over the place. I love how HelloFresh plans for me and has everything already pre-packaged, ready to go, ready for me to cook. I have poor interoception, as you guys probably know, so I don't feel hunger very much. And so I usually won't eat. This entices me to eat because it is it doesn't take a lot of time. It doesn't take a lot of energy for me to plan. I do not have to go into public to a, a big scary grocery store. One other thing I really like about HelloFresh is that last year in 2020, they donated over 4 million meals. Go to HelloFresh.com and use my code PageLayal12 to get 12 free meals, including free shipping. You guys in here, that's PageLayal12, PageLayal12 to get 12 free meals and free shipping. Make sure you check out the link in the description for more info. Now let's get, let's get into it. Some characters are autistic, like they wrote them to be autistic. They're supposed to be autistic. Dude from The Good Doctor, um, like, <laughs> see his movie music. Honestly, here's the thing. People write about like, oh, this person's autistic. And it's like, half the time it's used as a joke. The other half of the time it's stupid. And the cool thing about canon autistic characters is most often it's like the autistic community that has found these characters and is like that's an autism so it's a lot more realistic because we actually kind of decided ourselves when it wasn't supposed to be autism is so different for all of us we're all so different so there will never be one character that works for every single one of us ever so i'm going to talk about five different characters today and they all are quite different which is exciting um, but it also goes to show that the autism spectrum is not, like, we're not the same. It is a spectrum. We're all so different. These are five characters that you didn't know were autistic. I'd also like to give a disclaimer before we start that I do not, nor have I ever claimed to speak for anyone besides myself. If you know one person with autism, you know one person with autism. And this is just one gal's opinion. I'm just one gal. I'm not an organization. I am an autistic human being. These are my opinions. Now, I will say that my opinions usually agree with the majority of the autistic community's opinions. And if not, which I don't think there has been a case, they are the least harmful and the least ableist opinions, I do think. I am not just pro-autism, I'm also anti-ableism. You can refer to yourself however you want. I am not in charge. I cannot police you. Don't just listen to me. If you're just listening to me, you're not listening. I'm just one gal. Okay, I'm gonna give you hints as we go on and then I'll get I'll tell you who it is. This character, male, 
from a TV show you would watch as a preteen, especially if you were born between like the years of 97 and 2002. They were not animated, they were real life, real life characters. This character was the older brother of the main character. It was also the caretaker of the main character. I would say that this character is autistic and has ADHD. Who is this character? It is none other than Spencer Shea from iCarly. This character has an intense interest, I would say a special interest, in like absurdist art and painting and sculptures. They have a collection of funky socks, which is like very autism, like collecting things. He also has a lot of like quirkiness, social difficulties. It oftentimes doesn't understand what people are saying or people's expressions or taking things very literally. And he's also super smart, which is a big autism thing too. He went to law school and he has an amazing memory. He also is really weird with social cues and really bad at explaining his thoughts. I really like seeing Spencer there just being like, so much like me. Autistic character number two. Animated kids show again, but like, yeah, not young, young kid. Like between the ages of like, like maybe I started watching this when I was like seven. I'm born in 2000. This is about two brothers who um, do fun things over the summer. This show is none other than Phineas and Ferb. And today we were talking about your boy Ferb. First off, biggest thing, he is non-vocal. Or when he does, it's like to the point, also very monotone, flat affect, and that is super common in autistic people. He's also incredibly intelligent. I see Phineas and Ferb, honestly, like Phineas is like the ADHD and Ferb is the autism. Like Phineas is like, this is what we're gonna do. And we're gonna do this, 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 and Ferb's like, okay. And plans it out and does it because his special interest is engineering. Ferb like rarely ever has like facial expressions, which is stunning. And then also his animated, like he's animated, he's like rarely ever giving eye contact. So Dan and I uh, are friends on TikTok. Um, Dan is the creator. I know that Dan didn't intend this. Dan has said that like this is a really cool theory. Ferb is super matter of fact. This is the way it is. Love the representation. Love my man Ferb. Just a character number three. Cartoon show but like older. Like you're definitely like you're like a preteen to teenager. In this show they do suggest that this character is autistic but it, it's never like a like an actual thing. They just like they're like oh she's autistic that's why she is the way that she is. But I like to think of it as like this family because they're like more like a lower income. I would imagine that they are like self-diagnosed autistic. I bet they wouldn't have the money or the need to have that money to go for a formal diagnosis that costs a billion dollars. And it is none other than your girl, Tina Belcher from Bob's Burgers. <laughs> One thing about Tina, she is super open and like doesn't understand social boundaries that much. She often like says things that like maybe, you know, people wouldn't say, or is it like socially acceptable? There are some things that you don't tell a stranger. She's also a very literal thinker. She takes everything you say as like face value. She usually speaks with a flat affect. She doesn't know when people are making fun of her. She thinks everything is just literal. She also has meltdowns. She has visible meltdowns on camera. And I would say her special interest is horses and is um, like romance, being in relationships and being like a romance guru. Other humans and love and how other people connect with people. Tina Belcher, Correct, autism. This is autistic character number four. Cartoon, like younger, but not too young. Up until like teenagers, absolutely. Can be a little cynical at times, a little strange at times. This show is definitely like made for neurodivergent kids. And this is the one and only, my love, Princess Bubblegum from Adventure Time. Princess Bubblegum is autistic, she is. Like she literally has a quote that is like, people are made differently and we don't have to worry about it. We just have to, what did she say? She has like inappropriate or what society would deem inappropriate reactions to things. A very autism thing, like having our emotions in our body not line up. Her speech is often also overly formal. She's very literal, very blunt, very like scientific. Her way of thinking is very black and white. She also struggles with self-care <laughs> and which I'm like, correct. Interoception is hard. That's probably because she's spending so much time on her special interest, which is science, which is why I am like obsessed with her because I'm like, we are the same. Love science, loves everything to do with science. That's why she spends 83 hours doing it straight. I love her so much. The last character for today. This is my favorite character of all time. Teenage show, um, real human actors. One of my favorite shows of all time. Honestly, there are about five different characters from the show that I could say are autistic canon, but this is like the most obvious. I don't know if any of you guys have seen The Office, but I hope most people from that have seen The Office can agree. Dwight, my boy, might be autistic. First thing, he sets like strict rules for himself that only he made. He just made them up and now he has to follow them and that's the way it is. Facial expressions, does he have any? 
No. Does he show or have emotions the same way as everybody else? No. He's very blunt and literal and has a flat affect. He does not care for social norms or like traditions. Like even at the Christmas party, societal norms just don't make any sense to him. He has like strange relationships with everybody. He doesn't have a best friend besides like his family member. His cousin Moses is his best friend who he had to grow up with and Moses also definitely autistic. He really cares and stresses and worries about authority and who has authority over who. He plans all that out because that's not something that's just like given and feels good to us. Also, I think his special interest would be safety. He does like martial arts. He always has like weapons on him and knows where they are. And he's ready for if an intruder comes, he's ready for if a fire is gonna happen, he's ready for like living out in the woods. He knows what to do while he's watching Michael like survive in the woods. Like he is ready for like worst case scenarios. He knows what to do. He has like every plan set out for him and also thinks that he is responsible for being the facilitator of that plan. Those are the five characters that I have today that are autistic canon. I hope that this video will continue and I'll do a part two, part three, part 85. Hopefully it just keeps going as more people create more autistic characters. We deserve to have representation in media too with a story that isn't just about us being autistic. Thank you guys so much for being here. I will see you next week. I love you all. I hope you all are staying safe. And if any of you also live in Ontario with me, Good luck, Charlie.